Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Life Anglican Marsden Park. Another beautiful day in sunny Sydney. Um, let's let's begin with some songs as normal. If you'd be standing, that'd be great. Come on, do that. Lord, we thank you that we can come and we can lift up your name in this place. That we can sing praises to you for you are worthy. We thank you for your love towards us, so that we can. Um, show that love to others, especially to our enemies, those who don't normally feel the sort of love that, that, uh, that you have for, for us. So we just pray now that this would be a great day, a great day to magnify your name. Amen. We will walk the valley with you by our side You will go before us, you will lead the way We have found our refuge, only you can say Come on, sing now Sing with joy now, our God is for us The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress Raise your voice now, no love is greater Who can stand against us if our God is for us? And even when I stumble, even when I fall Even when I turn back, still your love is sure You will not abandon, you will not forsake Cheer me onward with never-ending grace Sing with joy now, our God is for us The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress Raise your voice now, no love 
love is greater Who can stand against us if our God is for us? separate us hell and death will not defeat us he who gave his son to free us holds me in his love neither hide nor death can separate us hell and death will not defeat us he who gave his son to free us for us the father's love is a strong and mighty fortress raise your voice now no love is greater who can stand against us if our god is for us sing with joy now our god is for us the father's love is a strong and mighty fortress raise your voice now no love is greater stand against us if our God is for us. Amen. We frequently need to be reminded of the, you know, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And that's purely through His love that He would he would do all for us when we are just mere cre creation. So, and from the chaos of darkness. Your word shaped the earth in your image a people made. But we traded perfection, the truth for a lie, and your glory was veiled in shame. But a promise made a blessing you gave to a broken world a savior for time to bear all our grief and pain but when the heavenly savior descended his throne all my sin on his shoulders and to win our redemption he suffered and died for the sake of my guilt and shame oh the price he paid for taking my place so the death was overcome when the king When my heart is perfected and free from my sin, I will rest in your glorious grace. Amen. When comes, we raise the works of our hands, are in service of the King. When a thousand tongues cry glory to God, 
praise will sing for the songs we raise the works of our hands are in service of the king when a thousand tongues cry glory to god forever his praise will sing Go. 
Dan, if you don't know me, and it is incredibly awesome to have you here. Uh, we're excited to get you kn to know you um, and to keep relating if we do know each other. Um, have you noticed these days how it's almost any subjects on the on the cards when it comes to deeper things? There's mindfulness. There's other religions. There's aspiring self. There's the power of the soul. On and on and on. But the one sticking point is Christianity. You go and bring up the Lord Jesus, you go and bring up the Father God, and everyone seems to be a little bit on edge. Well, there's a reason for that, and we're going to cover that today. Let me pray. Living Father, I pray that you will um, prepare our hearts. Um, I pray that you'll um, quieten our hearts from our busy week, and that you will um, give us an ear to hear a hard message about how it is difficult to be a Christian but also that we have a saviour that's gone before us. I mean, pray that message will dig deep into our heart in your name. Amen. I've just got some, um, some announcements to cover, so I'll just um, go through those. So um, AGM, for those that don't know what an AGM is, that is happening next week after the service. That is when we decide really important um, people for important positions in our church and we vote as a church. So it's, although it's um, something that is um, an actual meeting, it's really important. So join that uh, if you're a regular in the church. We really want to see you. Then we've got a super fantastic thing coming up on the 2nd of April. So uh, we are turning six. Now, it, absolutely, like rock on. Six years old. Now, um, uh, those that have been here from the beginning, we've started with small roots over in a very tiny little part of the church and now we're in this big building and some services we can't even fit enough people. That is an amazing thing the Lord has done and we want to celebrate that. So there's um, food after it. We've got a special guest speaker. And then in the evening, try and put aside, if you can, the evening as well because we have a celebration of salvation which is basically a baptism and um, confirmation so um, if you need to know more information about doing that or getting involved in that then um, see mark and um, if you um, but we want to see as many people as possible to celebrate those people who have said yes to the lord in a solid way in their life that's amazing uh, and finally offer tree now offer tree is another way we worship there's a um, white box up the back if you want to do that in cash, but more often than not these days, we, we give online. So there's details there for how we can do that. And this is how we contribute with our finances to the work of what the Lord is doing in our lives. Okay, I think we've got a bit of an interview now. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Mark Collins. If I haven't met you before, a special hello and welcome. Uh, I'm the uh, senior minister at this church. It's uh, wonderful that you could join us. And today uh, we're going to talk uh, to a, a newish member of our church about an important thing that we do um, midweek and one group now meets on a Sunday and it's our life groups. Because uh, life groups are a great chance to meet together, uh, to encourage one another and to build each other up on Christ. So I'm going to invite Nathan up and I'm going to let you take that microphone. That's okay. You can do that. Awesome. How are you, Nathan? I'm doing okay. How are you, Mark? We, we won't talk to okay, the, the about crowd that. about um, <laughs> how long that I've known you for actually, but um, what we will talk about is we'll talk about you tell us a bit about yourself 
Well, I've known Mark for, oh, never mind. Um, yeah, my name's Nathan. We moved to the area uh, maybe 15 months ago, um, and we were involved in another church at the time. And then sort of late last year, the, the drive and things were just working out where we went, no, we want to do ministry where, near where we live and looked around the options. And uh, yeah, we chose Life Church Anglican here because well, I've known Mark for a long time and get along well. And, you know, we liked what we saw. Steph was involved in the play group already. Um, so Steph's my wife and we have three children. Evie, who actually goes to this school in year one, and then Harry and Lily, no, yeah, Evie, and <laughs> Harry and Lily, who are in preschool. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, so I used to, um, what, lead you was in youth group at uh, Blakehurst Baptist Church, but again, that's not why we're here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, life group. So, um, you started at church, uh, you, you got involved a little, as you said, your wonderful wife Steph is involved heavily uh, in playtime, which is fantastic, uh, but you've uh, decided to uh, not only attend a life group, but do something else. Tell us about that. Yep, so we have, well, uh, Mark, one of the pastors here has started a new group and he asked us whether Adam. we, Adam, sorry, <laughs> Mark's his son, that's, yeah. Sorry, happens all the time. Uh, so Adam, Pastor Adam, uh, started a new group and he asked us to be involved and to host that. So we host a group uh, that Adam Lee leads uh, on Tuesday afternoon, evening, around 5.30. So it's designed, we both have young families and so it's really probably for young families, so not necessarily exclusively. I don't think we have bylaws about that. Um, <laughs> and so the idea is try and you know, do it while kids have dinner. They play while we do Bible study and hopefully everyone still has a reasonable night, bedtime night. Fantastic. Um, and, and why would you encourage someone to get involved in a life group? I think whether it's this church or any church, I mean, it's hard to connect. It's hard to go too deep on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning services are obviously an integral part of our worship. But if you want that closer connection and that more in-depth study and discussion, perhaps you have answers. It's usually inappropriate to stick your hand up and ask the pastor in the middle of the service. But you can do that at a small group. You can get personal prayer. You can get that connection. You can share in a deeper way with people, hopefully, that you can come to love and trust. Yep. And it's just a way to build connections, build you know, closer relationships with people and with God. Fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, friends, life groups are a key part of our church and we have lots of them uh, meeting during the week. So there's some on Tuesday, some on Wednesday, women's group on Thursday and also uh, another group for young families that has been meeting on Sundays. Uh, so if you aren't involved in a life group and want to be involved in a life group, come and talk to me. Uh, come and talk to Adam. If you want to go to Nathan's group, maybe talk to him. Uh, come, go, want to go at 5.30 on a Tuesday, uh, talk to him. Uh, it'll be fantastic. Uh, how about I pray and give thanks for our life groups and uh, what God is doing in our church. Uh, Father God, we just want to thank you so much for who you are. And you're a God of love, you're a God of relationship, you're a God who wants to be known. And you have revealed yourself uh, th through your word. Uh, Father, we, we love to come together as a church. Uh, we love to worship you, we love to hear your words preach, we love to sing your words, hear your words read, hear your words pray prayed. Uh, but Lord, we know that... Uh, uh, Sunday gatherings uh, don't allow that small interaction like what may happen on a, on a midweek or uh, in, in a small group. And Lord, uh, we thank you for people who are leading those small groups. Uh, we thank you for their love for their small group. And Lord, we uh, thank you that they are wonderful teachers of, of your word as well. Father God, we just pray that you would bless all our small group leaders and also that you would bless all our small groups. And may we see more people come to our small groups. May they grow in their relationship primarily with you and your son and grow in relationship with each other. And we just thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, now, friends, uh, it's time now for our children to go out to their program. So if you are... Preschool, so 18 months to 
uh, five years old, well, you're in the explorers group, so please go line up with your leaders. If you're in K to 6, you're in the jungle group and you're welcome to go and line up with your leaders. And uh, for those in the room, please connect with the person next to you. And for parents, just so you're aware, uh, the children meet in the demountables that are just off to the side here as you walk out that door on our left. And if you need to go to the bathrooms during the service, uh, they are across the plaza in the bottom there of Block C. So uh, you're welcome to use them at your leisure. Good morning, church. How are we? That was terrible. Good morning, church. How are we? There we go. There we go. Everyone's alive. Good to hear. Okay. Uh, it does give me the pleasure to uh, pray for us this morning. Uh, so please, can you join me uh, as I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we could spend in your presence today. Help us to remember that you have given us more than we could have ever asked for or imagined. Help us to continually turn our eyes to you in adoration. Father, in the most desperate of situations where almost nothing is certain, we know that God is more powerful than the forces that seek to discourage. We pray for strength for suffering believers. We pray for God to provide to those faced with poverty, loneliness and isolation. We pray for those who work, live, and teach your word in the unfriendliest of environments, that despite the challenges, people would come to Christ. Peter says, Friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Father, you have called the church to manifest love within the church, then to the world. So we pray for us to be a loving and supportive church family, that our church and our lives will be a witness to the world around us that we trust in Jesus. And truth is the foundation of our love, and you have commanded your church to walk in love. Our desire is that this church will walk in love, we pray you increase the quality of our relationships and care for one another within the church. Develop within us intimate, fun-loving, cooperative, supportive, and redemptive relationships. Give us a love for the loss that compels us to serve and speak your truth to them. I pray we will love the hurting, the overwhelmed, the sick or in need. God, strengthen us so that we may strengthen others. Kindle in our hearts a flame of love for those dear to us. We pray for Corey McAndrews for his ongoing recovery after suffering a heart attack last week. Be near with him in this time of weakness and pain. Sustain him by your grace that your strength and courage may not fail. We continue to pray for any member of our church that may be unwell. Relieve their pain, guard them from all danger and restore them to strength. By your power, by the right, sorry, by the, the right of your command, drive away from our bodies all sickness. Cast out any weakness so strength can be restored and health be renewed. Lord God, thank you for your abundant love and care for us. Thank you for forgiving our sins, even for the sins we do not realize we commit. Lord, please fill us with your wisdom and compassion as we move into another week. May you bless us with your never-ending love. May you fill our cups with joy and may life's overflow with your abundance. Lord, please help us to serve in all we do. Help us to honour you both today and every day. For you are the Alpha and Omega, King over all. We thank you for all you bless us with. We thank you for the freedom we find in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Rachel and I'll be reading the Bible today. The Bible passage today is in the book of John. It's in chapter 15 and it's verses 18 to 25. So if you'd like to listen, that's fine. If you'd like to find it in your device or in your Bible, it's John chapter 15 verses 18 to 25. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. Friends, it's wonderful that we get to dive into John's Gospel again. Uh, and and to, today we're thinking about hate. Hate. Now, I actually think we live in a society that's full of hate. You just have to read some of the comments that are put against, well, what the world perceives as controversial hate uh, Facebook posts. We have hate crimes. We have hate speech. We have hate incidents. New South Wales police have a page on their website which is dedicated to policing and reporting hate incidents and crimes. It says on their website this, when there is no crime committed but an action is still motivated by hate, prejudice or bias, it is known as a hate incident. Both hate crimes and hate incidents are taken very seriously by New South Wales police. Hate. There's also training on tackling hate. I looked up this website, tacklinghate.org, and it has training modules on how to tackle hate. It gives a whole lot of statistics about how people have been hated. And it says that hate ranges from being treated less respectfully to, along the scale, physical violence. And sadly... We see this scale in real life, don't we? And we see in our nation and also around the world where people groups have been disrespected and later on, sadly, it leads to violence and even death. Think about some of the issues happening in our own community. We have Indigenous people dying in custody. Four years ago, there was the Christ church massacre and in the Middle East and Africa at the moment they are almost four they're actually sorry there are more than 45 armed um, conflicts now you have to hate someone to pick up a gun and want to kill them right that's scary stuff we live in a world of hate don't we and hate seems to be growing in our own society. Despite governments and social movements trying to stop it, it seems that it's growing. And it seems that hate will always exist until Jesus returns. What about the hate against Jesus' followers? Now, if you are listening closely to today's passage... I don't think it left you with a happy feeling. It wasn't one of those happy, happy joy passages in the Bible, right? It was pretty hard. 
But as we reflect on Jesus' words in this passage, well, we start to get an understanding of why the first disciples faced hate and why disciples now and across history face hate as well. So in today's passage, we're going to explore two points. Hatred for Jesus and us and how to live in a world of hate. Now, verse 18 sets the context for us, but also for the situations we actually find ourselves in today. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. These are Jesus' words. So if you're a Christian, you may suffer hate. And unless you've been a deliberately awful person, this hate will come because you trust in Jesus. Now, hate can be displayed as disrespect, maybe name-calling, maybe distrust. And as we know, in some places around the world, it can be physical violence and even death. So why does hate exist? Well, it's because Jesus is a polarising figure. It seems on one side of the coin, he's the most loved and admired person in history, but on the other side, the most hated person. See, if you love Jesus, you'll admire him, won't you, and praise him for what he's done by dying on the cross. But if you don't love Jesus, then you'll move towards hating him. And the Gospels give us many examples of this, right? We just have to flick back in John's Gospel and we see that Jesus is hated by the religious authorities. And this reaches a climax at the end of John chapter 11 where the priests have put in motion their plans to get rid of him. But before that, we see this miracle happen where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And then a bit later on in that passage, well, we see the division between people. Verse 45 and 46. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Some people believe and they love Jesus. Others, well, they run to the religious leaders, don't they? And then later in the passage, when the chief priests and the Pharisees get together, well, Jesus' fate is sealed. He goes to die on a cross, hated by the religious leaders, and many Jews in that society, but loved by his disciples and others who trust in him. Now, the events in chapter 11, well, they lead into Jesus preparing his disciples for his departure. And as we've looked at this series starting in chapter 13, well, we've seen Jesus spend one last night with his disciples, teaching and preparing them. But even though they've been taught and they've been prepared, I think our passage today would have come as a shock to them. See, even the fact that Jesus has chosen his disciples out of the world is actually enough for the world to hate them. See, Christians aren't some alien group or superior beings. No, we are part of of the world. We come out of the world. But because of Jesus, well, we've left our worldly desires behind. And the world isn't happy to see us go. Now, a liar who stops lying is never cherished by other liars. A thief who stops stealing doesn't remain on good terms with other thieves. 
So for us, who have been chosen out of the world, there's a natural conflict with the world. Now, to be chosen out of the world by Jesus, yes, we know, brings hatred. And this passage, well, it goes on to reveal the reasons why. First, because people's sins are exposed. Second, because people don't know God. And third, well, for no real good reason at all. Now, first, the world hates because its sins are exposed. And if you're searching there in your Bibles, verse 22 says it. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Friends, when Jesus came into the world, God's solution for sin was revealed. And we know that people have been sinning since the beginning, but the way we deal or they deal with sins between the Old and the New Testament has radically changed. See, since Jesus has been revealed, people are without excuse. And perhaps the most heinous sin isn't some moral failing. No, it's the failure to acknowledge Jesus for who he really is. People now have their sins exposed. Sins exposed by Jesus because he's the one that deals with sin once and for all time. But as we know, people who don't trust in Jesus prefer to live like they don't want to be don't want him in their lives. Their hearts are hardened by sin's defeat, deceit. Second, people hate the Son and the Father because they've rejected their revelation. Now, in Jesus' day, when people saw the Son, well, they saw God, didn't they? They also witnessed Jesus' works, his teaching, his power, his miracles. But for us, yes, God reveals himself in the creation, but primarily he reveals himself in his word. And friends, if you think about it, we live in the information age, don't we? Anyone, anywhere with an internet connection can access God's word in most any language. There's apps, there's streaming, there's websites, there's videos, all pointing to Jesus. But because of people's sinfulness, they refuse to honour Jesus and the Father. Lastly, people also hate Jesus for no good reason at all. And verse 25 says, But this is to fulfil what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. The law here is a shorthand way of saying the Old Testament since this verse quotes from Psalm 69. Now, this psalm comes up a few times in the New Testament as it points to Jesus. But the point of it being quoted here is to say that if people could hate King David, who was Israel's best king by far, without any reason then the next logical step is they will hate the perfect king who King David dreamt about who would come in the future. Like David was hated for no good reason, so Jesus is hated for no good reason. Sinful people don't want to know Jesus. They will grow in their hate of him. 
And they will also hate his followers for no good reason at all. Now, we only have to read some of the New Testament letters and look at early church history to see that many of the first Christians lived their lives in the context of persecution. The early church was born and grew rapidly in this context. Now, for, in some ways, for many centuries, us, Christians in the West, have been living in this myth that we won't be persecuted for trusting Jesus. And really, this myth comes way back when the Roman Empire, Constantine the Great, converted to Christianity. And then he made Christianity the religion of the Roman Empire. This happened around 313 AD. And pretty much from then, for Christians in the West, things have been okay. Now, we know outside the West, it's a completely different story where Christians have continued to face persecution. Now, it wasn't always like this. Persecution was rife for the first 250 years of the early church. Christians suffered sporadic and localised persecution. One of the reasons why that happened, well, they refused to participate in the Roman imperial cult. So that was considered an act of treason and that was punishable by death. But the most widespread and vicious persecution was carried out between 303 to 312 AD. And surprisingly, it was called the Great Persecution. And at this time, the emperor ordered Christian buildings and homes to be torn down and sacred books collected and burned. Imagine that. Imagine you have to give away your Bible. They torch your Bible in the front yard, but then they start torching your house as well. But, it, but it's even worse because Christians were arrested, they were tortured, they were burned, they were starved, they were condemned to gladiatorial contests. Why? Because they trusted in Jesus. The world hates Jesus, so it also hates his followers. What about today? Well, you may know recently on Channel 10's The Project, a queer comedian named Reuben Kay made an offensive joke about Jesus, which caused a public uproar. People who weren't happy about this joke, well, they got on Twitter and wrote a number of things. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting comment about Jesus. He's just insulted millions of people of faith. Having to watch this filth during dinner time with a young family. You owe the public an apology and furthermore, this horrible program should be cancelled. But then there were others that thought, oh well, that's okay. That's what you do in this world, right? You criticise Christians. I can't believe Reuben just said that on national prime time TV. What an icon. But what happened the next day was the host of the project made a public apology. Waleed Ali, one of these hosts, said during a live interview last night, our guest told a joke which we know was deeply and needlessly offensive to many of you. We want to acknowledge the particular offence and hurt that it caused our Muslim and especially our Christian viewers. Now, was this hate speech? Or was it just comedy? Harmless fun? Does it happen because people just don't know or want to honour Jesus? 
I think there's actually something more behind this. Because I feel if the shoe was on the other foot and a comedian made a joke against a famous person in the LGBTQI community on live TV, then there would have been many more and worse repercussions. Friends, we live in a culture that has moved beyond post-Christian to post-secular. And this means that although the gospel feels distasteful, offensive, and maybe hated by some, science, atheism, gender ideology are also failing to satisfy people's greatest need. While people seem more hostile to Jesus, strangely, they are also more open. Yes, people are angry, but they're also hungry for meaning in life. And as we know, it's Jesus who offers true life, life to the full. So how are we to live in this world that hates Jesus and his followers? Well, in some ways, we've already been given the answer as we've looked at John's gospel over the last few weeks. Verse 17, if you're following along there in your Bible, is like a connecting verse between last week's passage and this week's one. And what does it say? This is my command. Love each other. And we've heard this a number of times in John's gospel. Love each other. How do we face a hating world where we combat the hate with self-sacrificial love that we see in Jesus? And we don't just look to this love, but we share this love with others. Our church, our life groups, our ministries need to be places of self-sacrificial love. And as the Bible tells us, we love one another first as a family of God and then we extend this wonderful love outside to our community. Friends, another verse which is written in the context of persecution is 1 Peter 2, chapter 12. And it says, Live such good lives among the pagans, those who don't believe in Jesus, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Friends, how you live in a world of hate is so important because it can actually point people to Jesus. How do you interact in the community? How do you interact at work? How do you interact in your school? Well, we live such good lives that people see what we do and give glory to God. Author Stephen McAlpine tells the story of a married mum with two children who became a Christian partly through how a boss lived out his Christian life. The woman, over a course of a year or so, observed her boss's life, how he went about his business, how he interacted with people, how he stayed cool and calm in stressful situations, how he loved and cared for the people under him. He saw a consistency in his life and she wanted to find out more. Now, some time later, she was invited to a church event. And at that event, she became a Christian. The woman said that she was looking for something solid in her life, something that took the burden off her and a community that loved her and accepted her as she was. Friends, yes, we live in a world that hates Jesus and his followers. But we're living in a world that needs a saviour. We can't become angry with the cultural wars around us. We need to live authentic lives for Jesus. 
We need to engage in loving community together. And God willing, through the work of the Holy Spirit, people will see this wonderful love and be attracted to it. And through the gospel, they will come to trust in Jesus as their King and Saviour. Friends, we live in a world of hate, but we have a powerful God. A powerful God that helps us to live such good lives among the pagans that they will see our good deeds and glorify the Son when he comes. Friends, live your life for Jesus. Let me pray. Father God, we just want to thank you so much for who you are. And despite in this society things can be difficult for Christians, we know that you are with us through your Holy Spirit. We know that you have sent your Son to die on the cross for our sins, but also the sins of the world. Father, we know that sometimes our message doesn't get across. But we know that there are people who are watching, people who are watching at work, people who are watching at school, people who are watching in our community, people who are watching and asking questions about who we follow and why we love the way that we love. Father God, help us all here today to live our lives for your son Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. For God so loved the world and gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness. Find what you're looking for For God so loved The world that he gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in him Will live forever Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in him will live forever In freedom for God so love, God so love the world. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God. Oh, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Yeah, praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. For God so loved the world that He 
gave us his one and only son to save for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power the power of hell forever defeated now it is well I'm walking in freedom for God so loved God so loved the world bring all your failures bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting God so loved the world Connect Cards, we actually really genuinely want to get to know you. So if you're here for the first time, you're online and you want to come and visit us, we actually want to know. We've got Connect Cards up there. So um, get involved and get to, uh, we want to get to know you. Fill those out. Remember your children. I have three and my wife is over there, so that's an advantage. But if you've got children, please pick them up from our um, kids program. And morning tea. This is not it. This is only the beginning of church. Over there, um, just through this door, is um, some food, coffee, and most especially each other, so we can get to know each other. Um, so we've been dwelling deeply, haven't we, on how unperfect this world is, so far from perfect. The human heart is far from the Lord Jesus and his, and, and his Father, our heart. Every single heart. The Lord has come with his astonishing life. He has brought a shaft of light into each of one of our hearts. When the Lord Jesus' shaft of light in you comes up against the world, there is hatred and there's pushback. But dear ones, this week, when that pushback comes, let's, let it be fuel let it be fuel to go out and love the world. Yeah? Living Father, thank you. Um, it's unimaginable to think that you would have anything to do with us. Uh, we are just as broken as everyone else. The only difference is that you've come to us. And we pray that when there is pushback, when there is possibly hatred, and when there is things that people don't want anything to do with because of you, that you will just help us to have the strength this week and on into the months to come and our life to shine like the stars in the heavens with your love for them. In your precious name, amen. Look forward to seeing you at morning tea.